So just a few words um, to welcome you to this works in progress evening uh, of Conlon Foundation and Stein. Um, this is part of a uh, two-pronged project we have this year, 2010-2011. Uh, um, the first part is the first Conlon International Music Prize. We've written um, uh, all kinds of people in schools around the world hoping to get fantastic new works for this clavier, plus another instrument, plus a, a voice, plus a video. And the second part of the project is um, is that Conlon commissioned six composers living in the Netherlands to also write uh, a disc clavier plus piece that is to say with any kind of combination they choose of again, video, voice, and other instruments, uh, only disc clavier, only acoustic instrument, um, anything goes. So um, this evening, each person is going to have about 15 minutes to tell us about their project, uh, whether it's only in, in words about the concept of the project, uh, hopefully some with video and sound samples. Um, and we'll first start with uh, Dr. Snowy and then we have uh, Danny de Graan, after that Daniel Shorno. Then we have a short pause. Um, and then after the pause, we come back. And Robert van Hoemen, uh, Geert Jan Prins, and Chad Langford will present their work. Thanks. And thank you this time. Thank you. Please. Wow. I cannot see anybody. Ah, hi. <laughs> yeah, there you are. So, hi, uh, my name is Wouter Snoei. For those who don't know me yet, um, uh, I'll tell you a little bit about my concept, and then I'm going to demonstrate, or rather uh, let one of you demonstrate my piece. So, um, when I got the assignment for this, uh, uh, for this piece, I thought, what can I do with a disc of here? And my first thought was it should be interactive, because it can be interactive and uh, that there is a MIDI in, there is a MIDI out, and with computers we can do anything uh, to couple that MIDI into that MIDI out. And I thought, well, what, I can, what can I do with that? Um, and then I thought it would be uh, nice to have um, a, a, a simple way of controlling the piano uh, that produces a lot of sound. So that's the first, the first uh, thought I had. Then I was thinking a little bit further on, on how people interact with devices in, in real life. So um, people with uh, iPads and iPods and, well, probably also with computers, some, some people still. Um, and then I thought, well, most people uh, in, in, in these, these days seem to be gaming. Uh, so they seem to use uh, their iPhone or iPad or computer to, to do games. Um, and uh, these games are mostly successful because they're uh, easy to easy to do and easy to uh, to to, uh, to operate, but still uh, can uh, just a lot of fun to do. Uh, so I thought maybe I can do something like that uh, with with the piano too. Um, and then, well, also I thought when when people play games and you listen to that, so people uh, are sitting in the train or somewhere. Usually it sounds quite awful, at least it does to me. So hearing someone playing a game is not usually something I'd like to listen to. So I thought, well, maybe you can combine these things and have someone play a game and meanwhile uh, producing uh, music. So uh, this is actually the concept of my piece. It's called, for now, it's called The Game. Um, and uh, the, the computer is coupled to the piano. Um, and what I want to do is, uh, uh, for the concert also, is to have an audience member take place behind the piano and play the piece um, while playing a game with the keys and the sound that comes out. So actually I would like to ask someone to volunteer to try this for the first time with my sketch version here. <laughs> for this, yeah. Thank you. Yeah. So uh, it should be kind of uh, self-explanatory. There are three levels, and then after three levels, then the game is uh, over. <laughs> um, 
So, and you buy it, just if you use the keys. Okay. Thank you. Sit just to the side. You can see now the computer key. Okay. Everything works. Do I need the pedals? No. Okay. <laughs>
Thank you. Okay. <laughs> well, this is the, the idea. Interesting. Yeah. Uh, well, it's in the end, I made it a little bit too difficult, I suppose. <laughs> so to work on that. Yeah. 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 Are you, are you planning to uh, uh, like project the text so that people could do it all? I'm not sure yet about that. Because I can't read the. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. That would be nice too, yeah. Yeah, well, I've, I'm still uh, uh, not sure if if I want the the audience to see the text. Okay. I could also imagine that it is nice to see someone uh, just hear him uh, struggling <laughs> with <laughs> with the material, and then that, um, so I at least try to be uh, as clear as possible in yeah. what's happening yeah. uh, just uh, by hearing it. But I'm not sure yet. Yeah. Can both things can uh, can work? I think. But I think for people who can't play piano. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, the, 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 um, it should be more uh, more predictable and controllable. Yet, yet uh, still a bit challenging. But it, I'm I'm aiming at someone who maybe never was behind the piano before. Mm -hmm. So it, I want to try to be it as as clear as possible and just give any uh, anything that uh, someone needs to play it just on the screen. Of course, someone know has to know that he has to push a key. So maybe that's a thing to explain. Are you playing to sell? Hmm? Are you playing to sell? Not yet. <laughs> Could be a hit. <laughs> yeah, make an app for that. What's the title of the piece? Uh, working title is The Game. Oh, yeah, but maybe there will be a different title. But I like The, the Game as well. Cool. Okay. <laughs> Okay, uh, my name is uh, Danny de Graan, and uh, I'm one of the few that is uh, selected uh, by the Conwa Foundation to write a piece for uh, the disc clavier. Um, my uh, piece, or the working title of my piece, is uh, called The Book of Faces. Um, uh, when uh, when Conwa asked me to uh, uh, come up with a concept of a piece, um, uh, I was... Um, also working on an, um, um, a video opera, or actually I'm still working on that. Um, and the video opera uh, contains w one singer, and um, the, the text or the libretto for the opera is uh, completely based on onomatopoeia, and that's uh, the um, sound imitation uh, by the means of words. And um, for me, this was an, or, or is still an, uh, an, uh, an item that I'm exploring for several projects, and uh, I thought that it would be a nice idea to uh, incorporate it in this project. Um, however, uh, during the last week, I experimented with uh, the piano, and uh, uh, I. Uh, um, um, I found that uh, my initial concept doesn't work, so I, I deviated a little bit from that. But um, I will explain a little bit what I'm doing, or what I'm trying to do is, um, I'm trying to um, uh, use sounds, uh, uh, but now I'm thinking more of words uh, and, uh, and, uh, and f uh, singing. Uh, and that, I, uh, the voice of a, of a female singer, I will analyze and project uh, that information onto the piano. Um, and I do this by means of a computer, of course, and um, I will analyze the overtones of uh, somebody's voice, in this case a singer, uh, and every overtone has its own MIDI uh, note number, or gets its MIDI note number, and that will be projected onto the piano. Um, 
why I deviated from my initial plan was uh, that <coughs> sounds are much more difficult to uh, analyze and translate into me than words and, uh, and tones. Uh, so um, I'm not using the onomatopoeia uh, part of my project. Um, I will get, I'll can let you hear a little bit of what I'm doing. Hello? Uh, just a moment. Ah, 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 ah. Uh, as you can see, not everything I do with my voice will be projected on the piano. That's because uh, it needs a, lo a lot of tweaking, and I didn't have the time yet to uh, make a complete uh, working uh, solution for that. Um, however, if you use the sample, and that you have my signal on the speakers. Yeah. Well, uh, I repeat the sample in this case to uh, so you can hear the the repetition and uh, um, yeah, pitches of the voice. However, you don't hear them. Okay, it's still working. Right? <laughs> sound uh, part. Um, the, the title, uh, the book of faces, comes from uh, the Facebook of course, and I want to do something with um, the social networking uh, vi uh, hype that's going on. And um, what I'm interested in is uh, downloading uh, everybody's profile picture and um, use the, uh, sorry, the The face of the um, no, that's not such. The face of uh, the the singer. It will be detected. Maybe I will show that first. In this case, it's a webcam, and I will track. Uh, My computer is a little bit slow, but as you can see, I uh, superimpose a picture on top of my uh, face. Um, and, and 
in this case the, the singer will be on stage and her face will be tracked by a camera and I always place a, a small picture on top of her face and that picture contains uh, as a, again my computer is way too slow for this um, place these um, layouts of uh, or, or snippets of faces that I, that I have downloaded from the Facebook uh, social network and I will chop them so that her face will always change um, I hope I hope it works um, yeah that's a little bit Uh, not yet at the moment, but uh, probably there will be an uh, in, uh, interaction between uh, the frequencies the, the, the singer sings and that sort of thing. I, uh, in that case, um, I have to experiment with these things because uh, uh, a lot of my ideas don't seem to work, so I have to reevaluate them in the near future and uh, my, my working, pro working process is also that uh, uh, yeah, certain things evolve during uh, the time I'm working on a piece so uh, the relationship will certainly will be clear but it will be composed in the piece um, it won't be uh, some random thing or whatever How do you get Yeah. How do I get them? Yeah. No, 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 no. It won't be at random at all. Now it uh, it will be uh, according to a story I'm I'm trying to tell them. But uh, again, the story isn't. Uh, I have the story isn't there yet. So. Yeah. How long will the whole piece be lasting? I think ten minutes, maybe a little longer, maybe short, a little bit shorter. Something like that. And not the whole time you'll project this composite image? No, not the whole time. The thing is, how I think of it now is that she. Um, um, I wanted to tell a story with sound. That was my initial idea. Um, but as I explained, it doesn't work. Uh, not the way I want it to work. So, uh, I again, I have to reevaluate my idea. And um, there. There needs to be a logical storyline uh, for this piece and also for the video, and uh, it, it should make sense um, when it's uh, being played. But at the, at the moment, I'm not there yet. So. How much of the information will the, the pianist uh, have? She she gets a score. Oh, okay. Yeah, and this. Um, it it won't be at random uh, in that sense that what she is singing. Uh, has an, a very clear effect on the piano and also um, in that sense there's a, a certain kind of randomness because if she doesn't hit the right pitch uh, sound from the piano will be different and rhythmical content will be different as well but it, it will be in a certain kind of context which I have predicted so uh, it won't be in, a, in, in a, how do you say, in an in a improvisation piece or whatsoever. No. Um. <coughs> yeah. Okay. Interesting. Thank you. Okay. Good to be here. Uh, I'm going to talk a little bit about the concept. This is too high. I'm going to be talking a little bit about the concept of a piece which is going to last 10 to 12 minutes. Uh, of which I have written something that I'm going to quote. So I'm doing a little double variation here because I've just come out of a production. I'm pretty shell-shocked. Uh, and uh, unlike you, I had uh, five minutes to work with the physically five minutes to work with it. So, so the piece that I'm uh, going to work on is called The Never-Ending Cycle. It's uh, a new piece inspired by the idea of a never-ending uh, a staircase by M.C. Escher, the ascending, descending. It's a well-known phenomenon, right? It's an optical illusion. You have people going up, people coming down. And I use this as a, uh, as a, 
as a piece in my student time to make a, a, a quintet out of it based on Frere Schacke with all sorts of variations. Uh, so in this piece, uh, uh, the discovery is going to be connected to two crackle scorpions, which are sound sculptures I've been developing based on, uh, uh, on, a, crackle, on a crackle board, actually. There's no box with it. Uh, which uses the quality of physical touch. So there's a person, a pianist, or let's call her a pianist, uh, that is interacting with the strings on this instrument, and it looks a bit like a, a wild, hairy creature. It makes crackle sounds, it reacts to light, and depending on how you play it, it creates reasonably unpredictable sounds. Uh, what this instrument will do is uh, it triggers uh, uh, one of two different sequences. And the connection to the never-ending staircase is that uh, uh, the illusion of what we know as shepherd terms, those cycles uh, of uh, uh, ascending, usually ascending, uh, scales, where you perceive the, f the fact that something rises and rises and rises, where actually it starts very lower again, this phenomena uh, gets beautifully represented uh, on the piano. Actually, what you've just heard, what I'm just talking about is something that uh, Walter was doing a moment ago. So, and let me backtrack a little bit because it's good to be a bit more precise about that. So, two crackle scorpions are played upon by the pianist and trigger ascending and descending shepherd tones on the disc clavier. Right. Uh, these shepherd scales are pre-composed in the AC2 box, which is a, a tool we know by a beautiful compos uh, algorithmic composition toolbox, uh, which amongst other things can do score following, which is actually very fascinating. So you can use it as an analysis comparison tool. Uh, the AC2 box, I'm not going to say very much about it. Uh, it's, uh, what's more interesting is, for me at least, is how to deal with complexity. So ascending, descending are uh, uh, two one-dimensional uh, representation of musical gestures. It's a lot of the piano literature that we have for about a couple of hundred years now is based on scales. So whereas the crackle scorpion is an instrument that doesn't know any scales, there's no scale. There's an interactive element in there. But what it does is it checks uh, certain types of articulations. So let me continue on this. So these ascending scales, descending scales, two of them, are stored as MIDI files on the Apple iPod. We're all using modern technology. Uh, a new Stein Junction uh, iPhone application connects the MIDI from the Crackle instrument through to the disc clavier. So this little pot will play what the Crackle box, Crackle Scorpion, generates, will transform it, will match it with the computer that runs an AC2 box behind. Um, now I've turned it the other way around. The acoustic sound of the two crackle scorpions are transformed and filtered in real time and diffused through an MSP electronics uh, uh, surround uh, spectral sound patch. The primary motivic musical materials initiated by playing on the two crackle scorpions, so they will stand on either side here and here. Uh, the actual, the actual uh, electrodes are within reach of the pianist. That will touch them. That will trigger one or the other of the ascending scales. So you will have those two things. And then uh, also what happens is a comparison between a little analysis of, uh, of impulse responses. So this is, this is not pitch. We are not dealing with pitch because that's too complicated to deal with it from the crackle scorpions. A little uh, uh, attack analysis of how many, how many attacks within a second are there will get compared to uh, little fragmented mo models that are generated uh, in the, uh, electronically, uh, well, of course, uh, on the AC2 box. So the role of the pianist, beside playing the crackle animals, is to follow, initiate those different, uh, like, again, I mean, uh, <laughs> well, uh, mine is a bit more confused in a way and a bit more complex in another way. But uh, 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 again, the pianist is actually there to try and next to the triggering, 
imitate what is happening there. And what you actually get is a, is a, is a bit like a, a bit like a cannon, of course, but a, can, a cannon that will generate uh, counterpoint by uh, the pianist not being able to go beyond the 60 milliseconds of repetition time. Uh, well, the aim of this new work for this clavier is to create a 12 to 30 minutes composition with that, uh, that idea of organic growth behind motifics uh, that come out of that uh, idea. Uh, I think you realize that I have a nice concept. You realize that, like with any concept, uh, uh, the interaction between man and machine is actually what matters. And for me, the reason why I'd like to do this, because this is, a, this is a, as a, an instrument which has a, a very clear tuning, and a crackle instrument is an instrument which deals with complexity on a totally different scale, is to find a way of how to... Uh, have something which is not an installation, which is not a performance piece. And I think more than that I cannot say at this moment. So I leave you with this, uh, and I think uh, the rest will be history. Thank you. <laughs>
So the piece will be quite fixed, but there will be like like improvisation kind of elements in there. Um, also, I was interested in looking at the limitations of the machine. Um, what I found kind of uh, fascinating, but also kind of weird, that you can only play 10 notes, 10 keys at the same time with the piano. I tried, and I think after, if you trigger the 11th, the, or maybe it changed after you calibrated it. Hmm. It used to be 10, which is like weird to me because yeah. you have 10 fingers. Why? I want to play more, that's why. I, um, also, there's a serious speed limit. So playing really fast, what you also would like to do because that's what a pianist cannot do is not really possible. Um, and that's actually also something I've been struggling with, uh, finding a, a, like a validation of why, sh why shouldn't I just have a pianist play the instrument? Why should I trigger it with MIDI? If I cannot do, like, so I was looking for a material that cannot be played maybe by a pianist, but that's not really a musical reason. To, yeah, so I'm, I've been struggling with it, as you can hear. Um, I will play some things to demonstrate the sound. Um, I've, amplified, I've, I've, I've amplified the, the instrument on the bottom. This is metal bar that actually contains the or is the best contact point for the mechanism. It's amplified by two contact mics, boosted all the way up. Uh, so that's, an, that's a feedback issue, but I guess in like a concert performance, the speakers will probably be in front of the piano and not in the back. Um, and that's actually what you will hear, because I also the, 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 the piano has a silent mode where you can disengage the, the strings. So it doesn't play the strings, it only plays it only presses the keys and you hear the mechanism. So you can do some, I think, some nice things with like rhythmic kind of uh, patterns. Um, also, some keys, ha like all, most of the keys, have different sounds from the mechanism. Um, but still, yeah, it's not something that you want to listen to for 10 minutes. So, um, but this is so. This is with the silent mode on. Another limitation is that the silent mode is not MIDI controlled. So it's also a nice sound issue. <laughs> Plus, you can control the sustain pedal continuously, which also makes some kind of sound. Um, and one of the ideas was also to, uh, if you put it somewhere value 65, you get some kind of resonance in the piano that is quite special. Um, and for a pianist, that's probably very, quite difficult because it's only a small range. But the sound is very subtle. Another yeah, kind of difficult thing to deal with. Um, Yeah, so the same thing you just heard, but then with the piano. So I'm still contemplating like the, the, the sound with the piano sound is nicer in a way as a sound quality, but um, also less special, I think. 
So, um, now comes the scary part. I'm going to play some of my notes. Oh, actually, one thing first. Um, a bit of a difference between the, the, the sound of the keys. For some reason, somewhere more, I, uh, I think it's these kind of keys are. There's some ranges where there's actually barely any extra sound, but it's, uh, yeah, it's, very, it's varied. So and this is some of the, and actually the, the notes that I've been writing, um, I think I'm more influenced by kind of pop music. Like, so this is kind of a, a, a way, a tra like a, a, a try out to write something like that. So this is a uh, part of that. <laughs> for me, not for you. <laughs> I'm sweating like hell. <laughs> yeah. um, and one of the things I tried out I, as experiment was um, in my electronic works, I, what I, uh, one of the processes I use a lot is speeding up material quite extremely, like 40 semitones up or 40 semitones down, which in the Lisa software is speeding it up, is speeding it up also. Um, and that quite often brings out like things in the material that you didn't hear because you speed up something and so you hear kind of melod melodic material that you didn't hear before. Um, so I was interested in doing the same with the, with the node material, um, speed, like speeding things up and pitch shifting up and down. Um, and also interested in to see, because if you speed it up, then where does the machine stop playing it? And actually that was pretty, not that bad, but. So this is based on the same kind of tonal material. <laughs> So again, this is all raw material that in some way has to find itself into a piece. Um, another thing is, yeah? I think... So the extra sound is the cello? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think uh, I can talk more about some other things, but one other thing I want to uh, talk about is the electronic component. So I've been working mainly on the tonal work and, and getting the sound of the machine. Um, I made a lot of recordings of these kind of things, also in silent mode. Um, and those sounds I want to use to um, with this process that I've been using before called the family tree idea where you start with basic number of sounds, you um, specify a certain number of processes and you kind of generate generations. Um, so the five sounds you start with, you apply those processes and you get like the second layer of process sound and you repeat those processes. Um, I've used that before and for me it's a good way to generate a lot of material of which like probably 40, 75% you throw away but it gives at least me some of my material. 
So those sounds I want to use to generate new material and use that with my Lisa setup um, to play with yeah, some of the material you just heard. Um, but yeah, the structure I'm still, I find it difficult. Um, uh, usually I have some kind of structure in mind, but now there's no, none of that yet. So I find it difficult to only focus on the sounds and just let the structure deal with itself later. Um, but yeah, I still have time. So uh, questions? Okay. The instrument. Uh, waarbij eerst maar ik heb een enorm gevoel van afgrijzen kreeg en um, ik um, kende iemand die daar ook veel mee werkte, dat is Luc Houtkamp, een van de waarschijnlijk de Don, uh, Don Conbon, uh, of een van de Don Conbons in Nederland, <laughs> die uh, uh, veel met uh, die stof hier gedaan had. En uh, ja. Ik vond dat wel een uitdaging natuurlijk om eens te kijken van uh, hoe ik vanuit mijn uh, gebruikelijke apparatuur uh, iets kon uh, transformeren naar dit soort uh, naar dit merkwaardige instrument. Uh, ja, hoe zou ik het zeggen? Ik heb een, uh, een, een muzikale achtergrond vanuit uh, de slagwerk. En ik heb ook een elektronica achtergrond vanuit eigen gemaakte uh, elektronische instrumenten op basis van. Uh, Radio- en uh, zendertechniek. En dat uh, heb ik uh, gecombineerd in deze apparatuur. Waarbij er, zeg maar, uh, deze apparatuur die veroorzaakt uh, uh, enigszins uh, controleerbare uh, chaotische processen. Waar ik dacht de laatste vijf jaar, 15 jaar uh, zelfvuldig aan werk. Om daar uh, allerlei uh, verbeteringen of veranderingen of. Uh, dingen op uh, toe te passen. Um, het gekke was toen ik met dit instrument ging werken dat ik ook het idee had dat uh, de manier waarop ik uh, ooit uh, vanuit dat materiaal uh, wat uit die apparatuur ontstond uh, ging ik mee componeren zo gezegd. Uh, dat ik die technieken die ik daarmee uh, ontdekt heb, of tenminste, dat die ook eigenlijk weer uh, van toepassing waren op het uh, spelen met uh, compositie te maken voor dit instrument. Um, ik dacht eerst van ik ga direct geluid naar uh, MIDI transformeren en dan vanuit Pro Tools uh, dat, uh, of vanuit een instrument dat MIDI, MIDI converter rechtstreeks in het instrument sturen. Maar toen dacht ik van nee, ik ga gewoon eens kijken wat, uh, wat er gebeurt als ik rechtstreeks in MIDI uh, uh, ga tekenen of uh, dingen daarin ga zetten. En dus, uh, uh, de overeenkomst met misschien dit soort apparatuur was dat de, uh, als je veel met ruisachtige signalen werkt, heb je ook te maken met uh, verdichtingen van geluid of uh, zeker de dichtheden. En daar kwam ik uit binnen deze compositie ook weer op uh, dat er uh, wel sprake was van dichtheden en bepaalde clusters en dat daar ook weer allerlei ritmes door ontstaan. En ja. Ik kan ook wel meer wil zeggen. Um, ik ga het laten horen. Het is nog niet af, maar uh, het gebeurt. Ik heb het niet gedaan, maar ik heb het gedaan. 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 Stuff. Ja. Even denken hoor, um, staat alles aan? Ja, ja. Nou, ik wel. Ja, dat staat aan, ja. ja. Is deze ook. Uh... Ja. Alright. Ja. Nou goed. Ja. Doe het.
Yeah. Yeah. Okay.